Hi, Nana here. In this record, I'm going to tell you about why a CPA route of automation for converting a PR into a PO should not be fully automatic. It must be only semi-automatic. So most of you have given uh, so many answers, uh, but uh, many of them are very near to the answer, but not to the exact answer. Fine, it is not exactly been pointing it. So this time what happens, I will not go on and show you what exactly is the reason for it now. Fine, it should not be automated actually. So let us go there. And then uh, let us go to the purchase order and then let us know what happens. Query uh, agreement now. I go to the manage agreements. Let me go and then query my 3000 agreement now. Fine. Agreement number is 3000. And I click on search now. So once when you search it, what happens? Let me go and then edit the agreement. And go to actions and then go to edit. So in agreement, we are going to have what two sorts of things which are going to discuss now. We'll be discussing two sorts, two things now. Uh, once again, uh, we will now discuss the two of them. When the action will not create a change order. It is no saying it's okay. Fine. Click on yes now. Let, let it create a change order now. <clears throat> I will now say what happens a change of terms. Change of terms. So we are not going to discuss the supplier on the terms now. Fine. You'll not say shipping method is what this carrier. Fine. Otherwise, what happens? You'll ask something else. Fine. So okay. So the carrier. Okay, you have to give a third J there is this carrier. Freight terms. What happens? Who has to pay the freight? Fine. I will not say collection allowed. All these things are there. Fine. You will not say what happens the prepaid one now. You have to pay the freight. And then FOB, I go there and then say FOB is the origin or destination. Destination means what? Till it reaches our place, it is his responsibility. Like what happens? Uh, the transit insurance, the octroi, the road tax, toll tax, whatever is there, it is all his responsibility. And the payment terms, what happens? I will not say I will not pay two by ten and thirty, but what happens? I will not pay something else. Fine. <laughs> Net forty five. After forty five days only you will get a payment. So when you are discussing on all these things, uh, acknowledgement required is only for what happens your uh, supply scheduling mode, otherwise it's not okay. So when you are discussing with all these things, the supplier will now say, okay, sir, between this period and this period now, fine, from 22 to <clears throat> what happens, you say, uh, I, normally it will be a three months period. So what happens, I, I cannot accept for 1,500 US dollars worth of contract, but you make it as 2,000. Fine. This is where the negotiation takes place between the supplier as well as the implementing company, actually, the purchase officer. So for these terms, what happens, you know, say you give orders worth of this much more money between these two periods. Then what happens, the deal is struck. So this is going to be common for all the items, actually. This is going to be common for all items. And there is no item which is being discussed on a contract purchase agreement. Only the terms are being basically discussed. G3 is carrier, G48 destination, end at 45. <clears throat> okay, none other than. So let us go there and then save it now. So click on save. And then what happens? The second one is now going to be submitted for approval. I click on operate. 3000 is now submitted for approval. So we have the terms now. Everything is not done. Now, what I'm going to do is I will now make a requisition. So once when the what happens, the requester makes a requisition. I click on this requester. So he's going to make a requisition now. So go to make it. So let click on the requisition line entry. He's now going to make a requisition line entry. And then here, what happens? He'll now put one of the items over here. So he is now putting one of the items. <clears throat> so the item was having a list price. This was during Hyderali period. Fine. Now the price has now gone to 10 now. But what happens? Nobody has changed the list price. And so what happens? The requester does not know the real price as such. And the real price is not known. So he will now only put the item and then automatically the list price mentioned of the item will be coming automatically over here. And then afterwards, what happens? They will not mention the contract of which what happens you couldn't do it now. Remember, the contract is having terms now. The terms is already discussed. And then afterwards, what happens? You will not go there. And then he will now have to want something from the supplier, actually. Right? You go there. You will not say what happens. You supply two years pass for normal operation, send troubleshooting manuals also, pack in wooden gardens, enclose the consignment of the weatherproof one. And then uh, what happens? There are things he is not going to do it now. And then he will now take a copy of it now. Fine. He will know how what happens. Uh, item specific. What happens? Uh, uh, what happens? Uh, uh, the requisition specific information for each and everything. You will not take a copy of it. You will not go there. And then in this place, what happens? You will not paste it on the note to supplier now. <clears throat> Find the ones. And then here, you know, saying one more thing is what? You can see the actual specification. Because what happens here? He cannot explain everything on the description area or something like that. No, fine. On the description, you cannot add more so many things. And so what happens? You'll be having a separate specification. The fan speed must be this. The voltage is this. Power consumption link. The NEMA enclosures for this thing. So you will have a separate specification for each and every time. Fine, go there. So this file is going to attach it now. Fine. This file is going to attach it. Fine, close it now. And then I will now attach this file. <coughs> go there. So you go there. Go down. 
in the bottom what happens i will not click on attach file so after after giving giving some note to supplier on this things what happens you know you attachment right click on plus now this attachment is only for the supplier now so you will now make a category over here drop down to whom it is going to be it will now be to the supplier actually so he will now choose to whom the attachment is fine click on supplier so click on browse and then here what happens i will now go to the desktop and then pick up this one fine go to the item specification now i will now open up the item specification and then click on open by which what happens it gets attached and then the title will be coming as it's now <laughs> and then once it is done what happens again okay so he has attached the item specification and then what happens there is supplier actually and click on okay so in the requisition he has now made these two more things fine go there so he has now given a note to the supplier for everything other attachment is also given then go there and then he will not submit for requisition he will not add to requisition and then you know submit of approval now so since i have already given an automatic approval it will be getting approved automatically when you connect and submit so 1026 once when you submit for approval it will be getting automatically approved now we go into the automation area when you go there go to the automation area so in the automation area go to the purchasing and then 1026 we are going to make a query through process requisition you click on the task carousel and then here what happens you click on the process requisition is equivalent to auto create area of ebus now you go there so we we'll now query 1026 1026 1026 and then you tap and then remove the buyer and then make a query now so once when you query what happens if you search for it <coughs> it will not show you everything now so there is a yellow tick mark yellow triangular box is coming when yellow or uh, green or whatever it is you click on it it says what previously it was saying the buyer was not there so it failed automation now we have provided the buyer because when you are doing the bpa we already provide the buyer now you say the requisition line failed automation because the price is not negotiated at all and that is the real reason the price is not saying as 2 dollars the 2 dollars must have been updated to the item master some long long ago i am buying nariel <coughs> coconut at 25 paisa <clears throat> when what happens in hyderabadi period and now if you give 100 quantities of nariel uh, and then ask the supplier to supply at say 25 paisa he has to, you know the purchase order will be 25 he will say poda ponga i will not do it it is even my grandfather has not sold at the date that is what he will not say so what happens it will not come to a standstill and then what happens nothing it will not move at all because what happens if you fully automate it it will not go at 25 paisa of nariel price into the purchase order directly so here also what happens the 2 dollar which has been written what happens it will be going into the purchase order and then this is not the realistic price actually because it has not come from what happens item master you select and then click on add document better and then since the price is not negotiated what happens uh, you will not be able to even populate the source document on the next screen now in the auto document builder what happens you cannot put it if you throw and then write about it the source document does not have any price at all fine it's only having the terms basically and go there and so it's not possible so you go there is simply click on okay by clicking on okay what happens it gets added to the document builder and then from there what happens you create a purchase order so once when you create it manually this is a manual process totally fine it is a semi automatic process now fine go there and then click on what happens create so by which what happens you will now go into the purchase order <clears throat> so the purchase order what happens you can now see the terms which are coming up now fine go there whatever terms you have discussed on the on the what happens in your cpa what happens you go to the terms area and then here what happens you can now see the terms coming up now fine j36 carrier g48 destination then 45 whatever is now coming and then if you go to the lines area and then you can now see an attachment is existing now there is an attachment fine if you click on the attachment what happens you can now see it has come from the requisition actually it has now come from the position the item specification is there and then apart from that what happens what are notes he has given for the particular line fine select it and then go to edit now we can now see the notes which he has written for the supplier will also be coming up over here now fine go down go down in the bottom what happens you can now see the supplier's note to supplier supply to is for normal operation fine go there you can now see all the things whatever he has written everything will be coming over here now <clears throat> fine so this way what happens and then you can now see the item specification attachment also over there <clears throat> okay fine so all these things are coming so this way what happens the terms and then the notes and attachments are all populated onto the purchase order but the price needs to be negotiated and so what happens the status is in a incomplete status only so when you do a manual one or a semi automatic one what happens is now the purchase officer will now negotiate for the price now fine you will now say but the 2 dollars is okay or not he saying no supplier is not agreeing for it you will now make it as 3.5 now fine you will now make a change to 3.5 and then there is what the price is agreed and then afterwards he will now submit for approval now fine he has made a change now fine to 3.5 so what happens the total quantity is also coming one one quantity 3.5 is now made and then afterwards what happens he will now submit for approval so in this case what happens is that the price is negotiated only after conversion now fine the orders okay the total amount uh, released against source agreement in this order is now less than the required minimum fine 10 dollars is required fine we are now given a minimum release of 10 dollars so it's not allowing us now fine so we go there and then let us now make it extra now 
And remember again, when what happens, the requester needs only one quantity. What happens, he, the supplier is not agreeing for it. So what happens, he'll be adding three quantities. He has to add it. And so what happens, this purchase officer should never ask the requester to what happens, increase the quantity. Because requester needs only one quantity. And then he is now providing a service to the requester. And so what happens, he should not ask the requester to do it, but he will now add uh, order more now for which what happens you'll be having a justification because supplier wants a minimum of ten dollar worth of orders so because of which i'm able to do it so when he has an when he meets the audit fine every time what happens uh, many companies will be having an audit trial for every purchase offices at the month end and then during which what happens uh, they may have to substantiate some of the audit query whenever they ask for so they'll be ready with all the answers and then uh, why the requisition quantity and po quantities are not matching so you'll be ready with the answer so requester is the ultimate authority in the procurement to pay life cycle. And so what happens, whatever he wants has to be fulfilled. You may even buy more, but you cannot buy less actually. <clears throat> and then when you buy more, what happens, there must be a justification for what happens, the spend also. Because the purchase officers are supposed to what do what? Spend reduction is one of the ultimate aim. So they have to negotiate best prices as well as what happens, reduce the spend actually. So it is like working on a, what happens, a, uh, on a knife edge, fine. <clears throat> so the, the, in the, both, the, the, both the edges are really sharp. So what happens, it will be very, very difficult what happens uh, for him to, uh, do the things now fine. He has to meet the requester's need as well as what happens. There. The company's uh, corporate policy of what reduction of spend also has to be taken care of. So there is a reason what happens. A CPA route of automation can only be semi-automatic and then you cannot convert it. If you do the conversion straight away, what will happen is that it will now become an approved SPO as such now, straight away. And then that will be having a wrong price because it's not coming from item. So in the BPA route, what happens, we have already discussed the price. BPA is having terms as well as the price. Both are negotiated in the BPA, whereas in the CPA, we are negotiating only the terms. And so what happens, this should not be fully automated. It is only a partial automation. In the partial automation, whatever you write in the notes to supplier as well as an attachments are carried over to the purchase order. And then that will be sent over here now. So that is why what happens, we call it as a partial automation. So we carry the requisitions information into the purchase order, but we don't approve otherwise the purchase officer, what happens, discuss with the supplier and then what happens, negotiate the price. Since the prices are not negotiated, what happens, it, it cannot be fully automated actually. So that's why what happens, a CPA route of automation for a PR, PO conversion can be semi-automatic, whereas for a BPA route of automation, it can, made, it can be made as a fully automatic. Fine, thank you. I hope that you understood it in a way. But many of you have given a, a, almost a clear answer, but what happens, what happens, it was not to the point basically. So that's why what happens, I made this record to what happens, stress upon this. Fine, thank you, bye. And then we'll see you in the next video.